freezing out there. And my heater's freaking out. I don't know. Ugh. I think you just heard the sound of my heater dying. On this episode of Freezing Cold Tying Tips video, we're going to mix materials. That box is full. <laughs> so a lot of you are wondering where to send stuff for these little unboxing things. I've got an address in the description of my videos. Uh, I'll tell you where to send it, um, all that stuff. So yeah, just check out the description of these videos. There's all sorts of cool information there. Yeah. So this first package is from Joe Cermelli. Uh, him and I did a little video uh, a couple years ago now, a few years ago now, on Field and Streams hook shots. Arkansas to Missouri. And when Brian sunk the net around that fish, it was just like oh, yes, yeah. There it is. We're, we did it. He's now with Meat Eater, like the Meat Eater. And he does this great podcast called Bent with Miles Nolte. We've done an interview. I've been on it already once. Probably end up being on a few more episodes here in the future. Oh. Holy cow. So Cermelli sent stickers. <laughs> and Cermelli, thanks man. I appreciate it. For everybody else, I will have links to the the bent podcast and meat eater and all that good stuff in the description below go check it out it's a great podcast they do a they do a great job they're a lot of fun and you may know who this one's from i don't hope there's nothing breakable in here sounds like there was <laughs> turns out there was uh but there was, there was some breakable stuff in there. <laughs> but I think everything's okay. So if, if you've ever seen any of my videos, basically everything that's yellow or yellow and black that I use tool-wise or anything is from Loon Outdoors. Wait, just a second. Oh, upside down. Yeah, I'm going to do a... I'm going to do a video on like my favorite tools and stuff like that in the pretty near future, maybe like the next tying tips video. Also the VitaVu holder thing, we're going to cover all this in a future video. So gosh, we got shirts, more shirts, more shirts, more shirts, gear, hats, more gear. More gear. Um, Loon is awesome. They, I've worked with Loon. It's a good thing they pack this stuff so good. Because idiots like me just dump it onto the table. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to be sending some of this stuff to uh, my patrons on Patreon. Um, little, little thank you stuff. Um, I'm knocking stuff off. Not tool. I mean, this is this is really really cool stuff. Um, expect a video soon that covers like the gamut of Loon's materials and gear and all that stuff. So yeah. So a little while back, I posted a picture of a what I would call like a sexy shad color double deceiver with a cool tail on my Instagram and I had so many people asking me questions about how to get the cool colored top on it and and it's just a mix of bucktail it's just two different colors of bucktail that I've mixed and I do it a certain way so I thought we would cover mixing material so we're gonna cover like bucktail we're gonna cover schloppen and marabou and and stuff like that 
kind of show you how to mix some materials to get some really cool looks. Whenever I feel like I tie the same colors over and over and over and I need to change something up, this is what I do. I, I still tie the same flies, but I'd start mixing materials. And this is, this is so fun. Uh, it probably has nothing to do with the fish but it helps me and keeps me focused so yeah and me being focused is pretty hard because because I'm like a Jack Russell Terrier that it, like got into some Mountain Dew I'm on Jack Russell Mountain Dew <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up okay let's so I'm going to start out with bucktail, and specifically these two colors of bucktail, it's chartreuse and purple. These two colors make my favorite color combo whenever I'm working with mixed bucktail, but I've done like a pink and white, black and orange, black and purple, kelly green and orange is another good one. But to mix these, it's really simple. You're going to cut off a clump of both colors obviously now we all know that all bucktails are not created equal watch the tying tips video on bucktail I'll put like a card or something up here or here wherever it is I don't even know but all bucktails not created equal every bucktail is gonna be a little different so you need them to be the same length so whenever I cut these I have one that's this big and one that's this big and I need them to be the same length so I'm gonna hold them together and cut them off the same length. So now I have both of them in my hands. I'm going to trim out the under fur. There's a couple different ways to do this. You can take it and separate them and then fold them back together. Something like that and then keep doing that but what you're going to end up doing is like losing a bunch of it and and stuff like that and it gets funky so what I've found is the easiest way to do it spin it and do that then brush it out a little bit keep spinning it and eventually you'll get a great mix cut all the butts even And you're ready to tie in at that point. And then you'll end up with something you can work with to get like. That's the finished line. See that blended bucktail? Also, these tails are super, super cool too. Um, they really, they're really swimmy. Uh, they are the Pacatrini Patridge. I'll link these tails in the description too. Tons of links in the descriptions. Just yeah. now for mixing marabou. I, I don't really know if. I don't really know if it's like technically mixing marabou, but getting like two opposing colors of marabou together on the same fly. You see this a lot in steelhead patterns and stuff like that. It's a very, very simple technique, but it gives really, really cool colors and modeled effect to it. That is orange and rusty brown kind of mixed together. Again, it's not really mixed. It's just kind of... But again, you can do this with tons of different colors. I tend to I tend to blend more natural colors with marabou. I don't really know why. I haven't done a ton of uh, different brighter colors, but let your mind wander. You can do anything you want to do.
And the last thing I'm going to show you is pretty much the same thing that we did with the Marabou, only done with schlop and, and it gives just it, it gives the same effect, just uh, with a different material, so it looks different and it's going to help you act a little different. So getting a really modeled effect with schloppen is super easy. That's olive and yellow mixed together, or again, it's not really mixed. It's just kind of spun and used together. You can tie the coolest woolly buggers ever with this technique, period. Then if you mix like the, the previous method with the marabou, two colors of marabou and then two colors of schloppen, I mean, it's just pure gold is what it is, pure gold. So if you find yourself stuck in a rut or if you have an exact color combo that you're looking for that that one color just doesn't cut it, mixing colors of bucktail, of marabou, of schloppen can create depth and mottled appearance that you just can't get with a single color. It, and it's so different than just laying colors on top of colors. It's, it's, not, it's not the same. It's just not the same. This also allows you to have different color combinations with colors of bucktail or marabou or a schloppen that you've already got. So if you already have yellow bucktail and olive bucktail, if you mix them, you immediately come up with a different color combo that is really, really cool. Or if you have black marabou and purple marabou, you mix those together and you get what Great Lakes guys basically think is the best color ever. And same thing with schloppen. So, so you can take what you already have, mix it, and you have something new. So, yeah.